can we start? Okay, so welcome everybody. My name is Marianne George and um, I'm here on behalf of uh, uh, CLAT and Delta Publishing and thank you very much for Nyasa for the opportunity to be here. For the viewers online, uh, I would like to tell you that first I'm going to talk about IELTS preparation and because there are so many fantastic books I want to talk about, probably it's going to be a little bit longer. So how we divide our presentation, it's like not 60-60 minutes, but probably the first session will be a bit longer. But we will definitely tell you when to come back for the second part of, the, of our pre book presentation. Okay, so um, first of all, I would like to say hello to everyone. There are some familiar faces here. Um, um, so as you know, it's IELTS preparation and uh, with Delta Publishing we are going to talk about. Um, my very first question before we, we go to uh, our schedule today, so we, I'm going to talk about what IELTS is and why, and then we're going to talk about three different titles. Uh, what and why? So first of all, I'm sure you are familiar with IELTS. Who has ever taken IELTS? Can I have a show of hands? So no one has ever taken. Who has ever prepared students for IELTS? Okay, that's fantastic. One, and you, you don't. Okay, just one person. Uh -huh. Okay, so you know what we are talking about. Uh -huh. Who is familiar with IELTS? Can I have a show, show of hands? Okay, because you know, I just don't want to say things you, you know, obviously, so uh, anyway, so you are the only one who probably knows what IELTS is, right? Okay, okay, so I'm, I can then definitely go into a little bit more details when it comes to the, the exam itself. Um, the challenge is why, why it's, it's not an easy task to take the, um, the exam and to prepare for it. I'm, we're going to talk about that and actually how this is, is remedied by, by three really good courses. I got these courses, I mean the books, just a month ago and I have to tell you that they are really good and I really had a lot of time, I spent a lot of time dealing with it and they really help you to get your students through the preparation. So um, IELTS is an exam and obviously as all the other exam it tests four skills. Uh, listening, uh, reading and writing plus speaking. So. It's, it's, uh, it's very clear what is extremely important and why it has an international reputation because it's, uh, it's a product of, of three highly um, high quality uh, institution. One is, Brit one is British Council and it's uh, important because um, you can only take uh, IELTS at the British Council in Hungary. You know, British Council Hungary has uh, a site here in Budapest and there is, uh, there is one more centre which is Szeged. So you can, you can take IELTS over there, but obviously you have to check when, what are, when are the dates. The other extremely high profile institution which, uh, which uh, put together IELTS is Cambridge Assessment English. So that's the University of Cambridge and that's the, um, the language exam centre of the, of the university. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows about first certificate and Cambridge Advanced and proficiency, so this is Cambridge. And the third one you might not be familiar with, this one IDP, but if you live in uh, Australia, you obviously know that that's an Australian company and it deals with education, so it's a, again, it's a high profile educational provider. So actually these three uh, institutes um, Obviously, it, it uh, ensures that uh, the quality is quite high and it, it's all, you can always be sure that it, the quality is retained. So, uh, highest quality control, that means, because I'm, I'm involved with the British Council with um, some exam, I mean, I help out with exams and I can see how uh, strict that is. So, when it comes to high quality control and security procedures. So, test design is done by these institutions I was just mentioning. Um, and obviously it's, um, it's test, tried and tested um, in the procedure. Administering the test, this is what we are doing here at the British Council and I can tell you it's extremely strict. For example, students can go in 
I mean, they, they can't have anything with them. <laughs> Just probably tissues and medicine and water in a transparent bottle. It's very important. So they can't have uh, watches because nowadays we don't really know uh, whether a watch is a, a um, you know, smart watch or not. So they can't have anything, obviously no phones and no electronic devices. And ac actually British Council provides pens and pencils, so nothing basically. And it's, ex it's extremely strict when it comes to sitting the test. So, um, the, um, the candidates go in and they sit there for nearly three hours and they can't go out, they, they don't have access to their phones, they can go out to the toilet only, but they are escorted by somebody. So it's extremely strict, but um, I'm, I'm quite sure that this is one of the reasons that it, um, um, this exam uh, is recognized everywhere in the world. I mean, this is one of one of the criteria. Marking is again done in very secure environments, and marking is done all over the world by um, highly qualified examiners, and and in the UK as well, and in and in Australia as well. Reporting again, it's. Uh, it tells you at the end what, where exactly are you in the scale when it comes to all the four skills. So actually um, these are the, the quality control and security issues and that's why, so because of all of these things, uh, you can be sure that it's recognized and it's trusted. So uh, you said you, you prepared uh, students for um, an IELTS, so why, why did they need ex uh, this exam? Okay. Actually, you said fail, but the thing is, you can't really fail, and I'm going to show why. Okay? There's no fail, and you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, go I'm going to show you why. Um, but uh, was that person uh, interested in studying or or moving to a different country? A job. A job. Okay. I'm going to tell you about that. Okay, so it's uh, trusted and recognized uh, everywhere in the world and definitely if you go online, I'm going to show you the website, uh, you will see in, in um, you can find and you can um, uh, look for the institutions where it's recognized. Um, actually you can see and I'm going to tell you about it. Academic or general, again your student will come saying I need an academic IELTS or the, they will tell you they just needed a general training. Okay, so what's the difference? Uh, academic, the name suggests that it's good for, your, um, for higher education. So if your student wants to study abroad, and nowadays more and more students uh, do that, um, the university tells them what are the requirements and they tell you that I need IELTS 6 or 7. Again, I'm going to go into details later. So the university or the institution tells you what level IELTS they need, but they recognize it. This is when you take academic. If you are a doctor, a lawyer, and if you want to work abroad, this is a high profile job, then you again need normally academic. General is for migration purposes. So if you want to live in uh, Canada, if you want to live in Australia, this is what they need. General, I'm going to tell you why it's different. There's a little bit of difference. Um, we'll tell you why. So migration purposes, it was the other one. Can you see it well, even from the distance? Okay, so this is very important. I just told you before that you can't fail, right? Because it's a test. IELTS is an abbreviation in um, International English Language Testing System. It's a test, so it's like you go to your second, you back your, uh, in your memory, to your secondary school, you sit a test. Everybody writes the same thing and you get a mark at the end. This is the system of IELTS, so everybody writes the same thing, everybody, no matter what level they are, and eventually they, they get a mark. And the university or the immigration body tells you what mark they accept. So that's why I say probably that person wanted a higher level, right? So that for him it, he considered it fail, but it, you can't really fail. So uh, um, I'm going to have a, another slide, but I just wanted to, to show you. This is where we start, um, Aya starts measuring. It's like mid-day two and it goes 
um, high up to C2. So actually it, it has nine bands, we call them bands or scores. So it's extremely important when you have a student to ask what is your need? What score do you need? Otherwise we just don't know what level he, he or she needs. So it's very important and I just uh, put it here to, for you to see um, the relation and actually these are with the names so um, for example B2 first it's it's not a one-to-one -one relation but let's see 5.0 above 5.0 till 6.5 that's B2 and for the advanced it starts at 6.5 it goes up to 8 and above 8 it's, it's extremely high level. So if your student wants to study, for example, in Cambridge, so one of the, the top universities, the university tells you that, okay, we need 7, 7.5. Uh, some, um, not sometimes, most of the cases, it, dif it is different um, when you want to study for a bachelor degree. It's normally a little bit lower, it can be 6.5 or even 6 depending on the course but if you want to study for a master degree then it definitely goes higher or you need a PhD that's another issue then you need quite high uh, I just uh, heard that in in Hungary more and more English language I mean more and more uh, universities who have English no who have courses also in English for example the medical school of Budapest Samovars um, when they advertise their co not courses, while their tuition, they also can ask for IELTS because it's tried and tested. So I, I think it's coming to Hungary too. So um, what I put together, and I think it's very, um, for me it was, was quite good to see, I just put the Hungarian equivalent and uh, the school leaving exam together. In many, many cases, actually, um, you can write down whatever you like, but if you want, we can send you the, the slides, okay? So we can send you it by email, so you don't have to make notes. If you want to, it's up to you. Um, so nowadays, uh, we have the final exams at school, uh, and there are some uh, confusions because of the names. Uh, a lot of um, secondary school leavers, they, they would like to take IELTS and for them it's very important to know if they take a Kuzips into Irechegi, that's still just a B1. And this is 4.0 to 5.0 in the IELTS scale. Okay, so this, this is it. If they take an Amats into Irechegi, that's, that's a much better, much higher score, 5.5 till 6.5. And this is in the Hungarian accreditation system. It's Kuzép Fokunya Vizsga. And in, in the Cambridge way, it's, it's the first certificate. Um, here C1, 7.0 upwards. And that's Fasho Fok. In Hungarian, we don't have anything for proficiency. That's why these two levels, we consider them Fasho Fok. So actually, above, above 7.0, it's Fasho Fok. One very important thing to mention, if you take IELTS and you score, let's say, somewhere here, you go to the Hungarian Accreditation Board and you can honosítani, I don't know how to say it because we say nationalize or there are so many different ways, but you understand honosítani, so um, you, can, um, you can have a Hungarian felsőfok if you have that. Okay, with a little, I think there's an extra fee to it, but I think it's worth doing. The other extremely important thing, what it's worth mentioning, that IELTS is, is only valid for two years. Uh, I had some um, um, teachers asking me whether you have to renew it. No, you don't have to renew it. Um, we are teachers, we are teachers. If you want to teach someone, we want to see a fresh certificate right so if if it's older than two years that's ah no we want a new one okay so you don't have to renew it if you want to apply to somewhere new then you have to take it if it's older than two years okay it's very important when it comes to the Hungary, Hungarian accreditation so if you have this you accredit for the Hungarian system and you get a first for this is for life 
And if you want to go, let's say, now you take it this year, in 2020 you want to apply to Aberdeen, then you have to take it again because it's outdated, but your Fashefok will be with you forever. Okay, it's good to know for you, for you as a teacher. Okay, um, we talked about academic in general, and it's very important because books, or the books always have that on, on the back somewhere, whether they prepare for academic or general. The listening and the speaking is the same. No difference whatsoever, no difference. Uh, uh, the difference lies in the reading and the writing. So, um, as you can, can you see it from the back? Yeah, okay, great. Anyway, um, as you can see, the, the minutes, the timing, and the number of items are the same. The content is a little bit different. Here again, the, um, the task, there are two tasks and 60 minutes for everything, but the content is a little bit different. If you, if you write the academic, with, with university um, entrance in mind, then you will have um, materials which help you in your further studies. For example, you have to read with some scientific text. Don't worry, these are not for experts. It's like the National Geographic or something like that, okay? So it's, for, it's, it's uh, understandable for everybody, but it's more to a, a more serious thing. It, this is the academic. If you deal with general, the reading is going to be a little bit different. It's more about job adverts or, or hands-on information or handbooks. So it's, it's more down to earth. I'm not saying one is um, more difficult or one is uh, you know, more difficult than the other. It's, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. And it's the same thing with the writing, so different uh, contents. So again, it's very important when you have um, students to find out whether they are taking one of them. Ah, okay. So, uh, I'm going to talk about this book, Ayat's Intensive. Actually, you know what? Now I'm just showing it on over there because we're going to uh, deal with them. Uh, so, this Ayat's uh, Intensive uh, is a short course, but I'm going to go into details. These three books, they go together. They're, they are about different skills and all of them um, about the academic, except for speaking and listening because that's, um, it's the same for everyone. But these, these have academic style um, um, examples and tasks in them. It's, it's very good to know. Uh, so these are um, really very good high profile uh, skills books. And the last one um, we are going to talk about is, is a resource pack, which is again a one-off investment because it's photocopyable, so uh, you can just have it on your shelf and whenever you have some, you know, there's a need you can photocopy. Or I don't know whether you work in a, in a language course, it's a one-off investment. I'm going, to go, I'm going to talk about all of them in detail. So, the first one is this one, and actually you are so scattered. Robbie, would it be possible to help me? Actually, we are handing out, thank you, we are handing out um, some pages, which you can take home, and uh, we hope to talk about them a little, if time allows. If we, if we don't, we can't really dive into all of them because then we will sit here for two weeks. Uh, but I, I would really like to highlight some of the interesting things and, and then you take home your, all your handout and, and then you can, uh, you can read them properly at home if, uh, if you have the time. So um, now you receive the content page and one of the tasks, ooh, I guess. And Robbie, can I have one? Yeah, okay, Ro Robbie, can I have one? Robbie, can I have one? Thanks. Thank you, thanks, thanks so much. Okay, so you got the introduction page, so it tells you uh, exactly what's in the book. And on the, on the other side, there is the, the content. Okay, so I think it's very important. I'm not going to any details at the moment because you can, you can read all, things, uh, all these things at home. What is extremely important? This book is about, the, it, it uh, caters for the academic module. 
it caters for B2 level. So if you, if you have um, students who, want, who need seven, don't deal with this one. It's a preparatory thing for, for those uh, students. It's a short course. It means 40 hours, but uh, you can make it longer with optional uh, hours. It, and it starts with a fantastic IELTS quiz, which is very interesting. Uh, we won't have time to, because there are so many good things here, as I told you. Um, what you know about IELTS. Um, IELTS preparation is a two-way thing. Once, one thing that is, is you prepare language-wise. That's one thing. And the other one, you teach exam techniques. And sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I saw some natives, they had to write it for whatever reason. And, and sometimes they can't score very high because uh, they think, oh, I can do it. No, you need some techniques. You need some techniques, and again, we're going to talk about that later. So, uh, it caters for all four skills. So, if you have someone and he needs to do it in two months, then you deal with this. And, and there are so many good things. What, okay, so that was the content page and the introduction. Ruby. Thank you, Robbie. You know what? I'm, I'm keeping one for myself or two. One? Okay. Yes. So now we're giving out a writing, mm -hmm. a whole unit. So this unit is unit four and it's about travel. And actually, I really want to go through it quickly together with you, but I'm going to open up. Okay. Okay, so that, that is unit four. We try to save trees, so that's why we put them into, we try to shrink them as much as possible so it's still readable. So, as you can see from uh, from the content page, uh, the contents are the, the most important contents you, you have to deal with when it comes to the uh, exam itself. So it's education, society, communication, travel, health, and so on and so forth. Um, and now we are uh, just, just rushed through the travel unit, all right? So if you look at the unit, there are some leads in, you know, to gear the student to the whole topic, and then there's a reading. Now, this reading, probably you, you remember that there was the 60-minute reading task, which consists of three, three readings. So, you can imagine speed reading is something extremely important your student have to master, otherwise they wouldn't have time, they, they will not have time at all to finish. And unfortunately, if you, if you do half of it perfectly and the second half is missing, then forget it. It's the same, you know, bad score what you get. So, uh, there are so many ideas how to help students with these skills, uh, speed reading and all these things. Now, it's sentence completion. So, as I said at home, probably you can, you can read it um, in details. Uh, there is a target time, so again, you have to train your students to, to read as fast as possible, uh, grasping the, the meaning or the important information they are going to be asked for. And there is a target score. So there are some questions and there is a reading for you. This is how it starts. Then you go on. Uh, and there's a, if you go to the next, that's page 40 here, and yes, how is it? It's on the other side of, of your handout. On page 40, you will see a strategy focus. Again, strategy, so it's not enough to speak English well or to know English well. The strategy is extremely important. So, multiple choice, how do you deal, how do you work with multiple choice questions? What's the best way to, to, um, to have or to, you know, how to deal with, with multiple uh, choice questions? Again, there is a task with a time limit. And this is what I keep telling to students, that time is extremely important, extremely important. Actually, 
uh, I think it's um, when, if you go through an IELTS preparation, definitely for the academic and you want to study abroad somewhere, this, um, the skills you pre prepare for help, will help you uh, in your studies because speed reading is something extremely helpful if you have you know, loads of materials. So, um, so this is a fantastic thing to study if you want to study or um, in life in general. Okay, so that dealt with the, the reading part. Now there's the listening part. If you just go on, so there are aims again, something to help you and again, um, some ideas how to exploit this. Okay, and then speaking. So actually in, in one unit you deal with all the skills. So what are the, the very important things you have to think about when it comes to speaking? What are the parts of speaking and how, how can you uh, prepare for those parts? You are the examiner. There is a box you can see here that is page 43. You are the examiner. That means you put yourself in the shoes of the examiner. So what are the examiners looking for, you know? Again, so it's not enough to speak quickly, you know, and know all the, the very basic words. If you're fluent, that's obviously very important. But if you don't use very complex uh, grammar or very good vocabulary, then you will get a lower mark. Yeah, so it, it's, not, you know, as I said, it's not enough to be a native. That's one thing. You have to be a very educated native. Okay, so you are the examiner and here are some ideas what you have to uh, look for. Boost your band score, fluency. Again, ideas, ideas and practice. And finally, there is a writing part. So, again, if you go home, you will see the writing task uh, um, has two parts. The first part is shorter. Uh, for 20, it's about for 10, 20 minutes and there is a chart in the academic part you have to analyze and you have to talk about it. And again, it's extremely useful if you study uh, at university, no matter whether you are a psychologist or a doctor, because uh, statistics and, and you know, graphs and charts, they're very important in, in every subject. So you, you have to uh, analyze them and talk about them. The second part, uh, the second task uh, in the writing is always an essay. Again, it's very good to learn how to write an essay. It's very good because this is a skill you will use, you know, in your life. Uh, and, um, and again, here in the writing part, of course, there is a, um, a kind of lead-in and there are um, candidate one, candidate, which one is good, which one is not good. There are so many ideas you can work with. And again, over to you and boost your band score, advice, advice. So actually this is, uh, as, you, as you could see, a, a whole unit deals with one topic and it, it looks at it from different angles from the all four skills. Then after units, there is a test file. And <laughs> I'm going, that's intensive, okay. Uh, we're going to give it out to you, not now, okay, because we don't, but uh, before you go home you will have this test file, you can have a look at it. Actually, I'm a bit conscious of time because we, uh, there are so many fantastic materials I want to show you. So, that was the, the IELTS Academic Intensive and as we said, it's a short course. Now, the next, oh sorry, <laughs> so this, this was the structure. Uh, again, as I said, skills practice, obviously, and eight topics altogether. After every second topic, there's a test file. We, you're going to get a, a handout on that. A writing task bank means there are so many models. The writing is usually the most difficult for everybody. Um, Hungarians, um, I'm, I'm not saying struggle with it because it's something you can learn, but this is a little bit different to what we have learned. So you have to teach your student how to write a proper essay. Once they learn it, they, they can use it forever. So it's, it's really very helpful. Um, yeah, th these are the materials we went through and, and uh, before you leave, I'm going to give you the rest of the, the handouts. Okay, the next. Um, what 
this is sorry, I just try to be transparent here. Yes. So the next um, book we would like to, to I would like to mention or the the series. This is the Advantage series. So it's very important that it deals with academic module and it deals with the higher levels, 6.5. Uh, in the Hungarian system, uh, I credit 6.5 to Középfok, but 7.0 is already uh, Felsőfok. So 7.0 plus, that means it goes up to the sky. So um, the good thing with these, that you can use it in, in your classroom, or you can give it to your student as a self-study, because it has all the answer keys and there are so many exam uh, tips in it. So again, um, probably... Hello. So if you use it in, you can use it in one-to-one, -one, you can use it in, in a little group. So it's really up to your circumstances how you use it. Okay, let's start with the, the listening and speaking. Again, it's very important who the authors are. I believe, because if these authors are experienced and they know, they know what they are talking about, not just imagining what the problem can be, I think it's extremely important. So these, um, the, the authors, in this case, it's John Marx, uh, and he's an experienced IELTS teacher. It's very important. So he knows what are the, um, uh, you know, the advantages of certain materials, so he knows how to handle um, uh, errors, so he knows exactly what he's talking about. There's a step-by-step -step guidance, so it helps you when you uh, prepare students. And obviously there's again ex exam uh, practice. Uh, what we really like is, is the model. We see how other people do it, so there are so many models in here. Uh, there's this audio CD at the back, so, and a script, so you can uh, exploit them. Um, as I said, it can be used for um, um, on um, self-study because of the answer key. Uh, again, but the answer key, I don't think it's a bad thing if we are teachers, we want to make sure that we don't say some things which are, we are not really sure about and it's not a problem at all. Even native teachers do that, they, they check the answer key, so it's not, a, you know, it's not something we should, yeah, we should be, you know, sad about. Um, what the examiner is looking for, again, because it's speaking, you just have to make sure you do not just talk about things, but you use the certain criteria which the examiner really wants to know. Um, now, <laughs> thank you so much. So, uh, what, ah, again, it's two, two pages. So, what we have copied for you, one is the content page. So one is the content page where you can see what is covered and basically again uh, there are nine units. So all, all topics which might be on, on a speaking they are, they are um, covered and as you can see it caters for all different parts of the speaking test. Um, obviously if you teach IELTS you first you have to uh, find out exactly about the, the, the little details of the exam. So the speaking exam lasts for about 12-15 minutes, um, something somewhere in between and it's a one-to-one -one uh, situation so there is a, a um, the examiner and there is the uh, the candidate it's recorded so the ca the examiner gives a score but it, it is sent out to to not just one person but different people without obviously without any names and any reference and they also uh, mark it so as I said it's extremely um, secure and extremely high profile how it's marked so again this is why it's that popular. So anyway this just getting back to our book so um, as you can see from the content page this is these are the the topics it's, it covers and um, we copied here 
two pages for you. This is the, um, Equal Opportunity 44 and uh -huh. sorry we're going to deal with that but first I just want to highlight some things. Um, so as I said, there are nine units. And the first seven units, that there is a diagnostic section. Again, it's very important because you don't know if, where your student is when he or she arrives to you for the first time. So you have to find out where he or she is. And then he, he is, or she is, let's say, uh, at level five, then he needs seven of course you have to work hard to get that level um, this this book really helps with this diagnostic section so try it out first where you are and then from that point you can build up your your knowledge and all your skills um, when it comes to uh, listening and speaking you definitely you need to be aware of your grammar you have to be quite um, you have to use very complex uh, grammar items if you want to get high marks. Uh, vocab and pronunciation. When, when the examiner looks at your or listens to your pronunciation, it's not that you have a Hungarian accent or you have a Polish accent or a whatever accent. It, there are some words which has to be, for example, event is a, is a very, very common Hungarian mistake instead of event. And that's why nobody understands if you say event. So these are the little uh, pronunciation issues which are very important. If you have an accent, a Hungarian accent, it's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine, but you have to be, um, you have to try to be understood. Okay, it's very important. As we know, there are so many different um, nationalities who have very heavy accents. But um, if you can understand them, or the examiner understands them easily, because they use the proper intonation patterns or stress patterns, for example, in, the, in this event and event, event, so event is not good, uh, then obviously it's understandable, you have to listen a little bit. But, you know, when uh, you take IELTS, you're going to study abroad, and there are so many nationalities, so everybody will have a different accent. You have to get used to it. So anyways, I'm, I'm just um, telling you that pronunciation is important from that angle. In this book, there are, again, exam skills, um, some strategies. Again, probably we are not going to go into that detail because time flies. And we, I'm just looking at my um, watch. Uh, you, can, you can check it when you go home on your handout. Um, so there are exam skills and, and definitely practice when it comes to um, speaking. Um, in one of the sections of the speaking you get a task card. That's a little card the examiner gives you. He or she, the examiner doesn't see, you know, just draws one and gives you. That's a task card. Can you, can you read that? Yes. And then you have a little time to prepare. Okay, so describe a teacher who influenced you. You should say when and where you, you met this teacher, who the teacher was, and a subject he, she thought, why the teacher's lessons were special, and explain how this teacher influenced you. Okay, so this is a task card. Now you have to, I mean your student, you're the candidate, uh, has to look at the task card and look at all the questions and has to answer all of them. Okay, has to listen carefully to to fulfill the requirements, okay? So I have to listen to little, uh, little details. So answer all the questions in nice English, okay? Nice complex sentences with fantastic adjectives and referring here and there. Because uh, he has to talk about um, why this teacher's lesson were special, you know? So there's so many things you have to listen to. Obviously, the higher level you want, the more complex language you use. Because you can say, I liked her because she was clever. Yeah, but you know, there are, this is whatever, five, <laughs> okay? But obviously there are so many um, delicate language you can use to have a higher school. Okay, so actually you will have, uh, yes. So this is the task card which is uh, exploited here on your handouts. And I'm sure at home you will have 
more time to deal with. Yes, because we don't have time here. Okay, the next one is going to be the reading. Okay, so the next one is the reading. Again, you have to know how the, the exam is put together. So there are t three texts in total. But this is um, three texts in total, and, and total, this is the number, these are the number of words. So 2,000, 2,007 words. But they're quite, you know, this is one text. They're quite long, and you, you have 60 minutes. So it's, it's quite a challenge. It's quite a challenge. Uh, as, as I keep mentioning, g good English is not enough. Uh, again, strategies. So when you teach candidates, you teach them strategies too. Okay, so when it comes to academic, um, again, it's a very nice phrase, I really wanted to use it. So um, the texts are for educated but non-specialist readers. Okay, so uh, actually very interesting, very inter interesting things to read about. So if you have this book, it's a good night to read, actually, there are really interesting things. Um, um, university studies in mind, so what I said earlier, uh, so it's a good skill you will have later how to read these big, big, big texts or how to chunk it down, look for, look for chunks. There are so many good strategies, I'm not going to tell you, you have to look at them. Um, for the general training, because the, uh, it's different, I'm sure you remember, so the reading and the writing is different for the general training. Uh, there are official doc documents or instructions, but there are also long. And, and there are so many questions, sometimes tricky questions you have to answer. Okay, um, this book is for the academic module. It was designed for that, but it's also good for general training. O obviously, if you, if you study something a bit higher, then you are good for the little... I'm not saying lower, no, it's, not, it's different, it's a little bit different. And again, uh, the same thing with the, the usual ones, so it's good for classroom use or, or self-study. And uh, uh, speed reading is something which it, it really, really has a lot of ideas and exercises and, and different types of texts. Uh, vocabulary. Very, very important. Again, higher levels, collocations, synonyms, paraphrases. Uh, sometimes there is a question where they ask, uh, there's, there's a question about something and oh my god, it wasn't in the text. Yes, but it was in the text with a paraphrase. So you have to be aware, it was a text, you know, it was there, somewhere hidden. Okay, so you have to be aware of these, um, I'm not saying difficulties, because the higher level you are, you, you know these things, but these challenges. Okay, so... Um, Again, Robbie. <laughs> thank you, Robbie, so much for helping out. Um, again, it's two two pages. I mean, two two sheets. So uh, we have two sheets for the hand, uh, for the reading handout, and there is the content. I, al I I think as a teacher, it's always good to see the content. So what? what kind of texts are covered and, and you will see, because it's quite detailed, you will see um, there's always a vac vocabulary builder and there are exam skills catered for. So I think it's always good to have a, um, the content and actually there is um, a spotlight on exam skills and if you look at page 27 uh, there is there is a shorter reading, but there there it's a uh, an exercise to to have some speed reading. And here in page 26, you will find some ideas. Another technique you can use to improve your reading speed is to just find it out for yourself. Okay, so there are so many good things, good ideas. Uh, to deal with. Now, there is a key, but again, we won't have time to do that. Yes, okay. So, the next book, so that was the reading. 
goodness, makes the writing. And I have to tell you, this is what I see is the most difficult thing. Um, I only see Hungarian candidates, or I know about Hungarian candidates. In, in Hungary, by the way, there are so many nationalities taking the, the IELTS exam, so many. Because if somebody is here in Hungary, they take it, or um, it's the same everywhere. So if you take it in South Africa, or in, in Canberra, or in I don't know, Moscow is the same thing because it, it is so strict and obviously all the IELTS um, centers, the auditors, they go and check whether the centers do what they have to, so there is no, no other way. So writing is, is um, mostly quite challenging, besides of speed reading, I mean reading long text fast, and again the authors uh, are examiners so they know what they're talking about. Um, and these materials, because they not only examiners but they teachers as well, so they tried and tested these materials, so they are the really good ones. Um, as in the earlier books, it's the same thing, you can use in different setups. And I mentioned already, task one is shorter, 20 minutes and 150 words. It's not that long, but again, if you are pressed for time, obviously you have to concentrate and task two 40 minutes so task one is is what I already told you the um, chart or the so an analyzing some trends um, and the second one is an essay and the academic module okay so um, Rogi. yes thank you um, I think it's one one page yes Yes, yes, yes. Okay, again, we, we copied the, uh, the content page where you can see that there are all together nine units dealing with different extremely important issues of the reading, for example, opinion essays advantages and disadvantages essays because um, there is just one sentence for the second task which is the essay there's one sentence please uh, write your opinion about this and that that's an opinion essay what are th that's another task um, when they um, it's written what are the advantages and the disadvantages of I don't know building I don't know a lot of hospitals I don't know something so there are so many different types of essays so these um, units cater for different types of essays uh, problems and solutions essays opinion essays there was number one and there's number two grab and from the the task two in the first six units and then seven and nine seven eight nine uh, they focus on these graphs and, um, and charts, shorter task. And here you can read graphs with a trend, comparative graphs, processing and maps. So you just have to have a, a certain language to, you, to work with that. Again, extremely useful. It, it, it is really what you need when you prepare your students for an essay. And these are the areas. Obviously, the higher you want to get, the com more complex vocab and grammar you use, the better organization you have, linking, you know, paragraphing, these are obvious things, and ideas and arguments. And so there are ideas here, how to use your arguments and how to build up your arguments. Uh, what I can see from experience that uh, a lot of um, uh, secondary school students take it because they want to get into university. And um, they're not always prepared to have uh, good arguments and ideas. Not always, I'm not saying. <laughs> because they're young, that's why. If, if, if they're not taught at their secondary school, because, because of their age, they, they don't have to, you know, they don't have uh, these kind of uh, conflicts when they have to have an argument. So if their teacher at secondary school not, they don't focus on that, then you have to tell them how to, you know, have these arguments. 
So again, I think these um, um, skills are not only skills for IELTS, but they're skills for life. So it's, but you know, we are teachers, so we know that uh, learning is always something which is good for life, not just for an exam. Okay, so actually, again, something for you to take home and deal with. Um, <coughs> yes, and again, so model essays, main idea, okay. We are not going to deal with that in that very detail, okay? Okay, so, last but at all, not least, this fantastic resource pack. So, resource pack, so, Sparrow bound. You, you put it into your copier and, and you can copy it properly, okay? Because otherwise you can't really copy it obviously because it's Ill illegal and the other thing is not practical. So, it's, it's a photocopier book. So, why did Joan Marka, Marx, okay, Joan Marx create this book? Um, we are all teachers, we are English teachers and uh, there are so many fantastic games and, and board games and riddles and whatever just to make our life easier when we want to end the lesson or we want to um, play with our students or we want them to have a you know relaxed time while probably a little bit learning but usually when you prepare your students for IELTS it's, you, you think it's very serious. Uh, this book actually combines the two things so it deals with IELTS language or IELTS uh, preparation ideas, but in a fun way. So that's why it's, it's, um, it's quite a good book because of this. So it's, uh, as I tried to point out, it's relevant and fun at the same time. Um, 25 activities it has, which is really great. So it's, it's quite a good um, library. Uh, it it um, meant to be for the academic module and you can see the this is the level um, practice ah yeah very very important practice exams uh, and the CD for listening actually for this Bobby, I really want so first of all you get oh sorry oh sorry ah yes no, I keep one for myself. So, you will get a content page. Again, you will see all the, the activities. Actually, on the, um, yes, I, I wait for the, the um, Ruby to uh, give the handouts to everybody. So, we copied for you the introductions. Actually, these introductions are really quite useful because they tell you what the whole, the, the whole concept is. Uh, if you look at the content page, you can see the, that it deals with certain parts of the exam. So the reading, write, uh, writing task one or two, or the speaking and the listening. And actually there is a whole exam at the very end. Uh, actually it's, it's exam day, so it draws your attention what are the very important things you have to uh, be aware of when you go to take the exam. So as I said, one thing is that you don't take everything with you because you can only have your water next to you. <laughs> and not even in a, something like this, but in a transparent bottle with no label. <laughs> so these are the very strict things. So you have to have this in mind. So don't drink three liters before you start the test because you will spend your time in the toilet and no extra time is, is given to you. So these are very important things you have to bear in mind. So don't, you know, over, overdo drinking and all these things. Um, and that's very important, it's one of the units. Okay, now, if you look at this, it would be really nice to be in pairs. So probably you are three, prob would you, you two somehow sit next to each other? Would it be possible? Yes. And probably you, you just, you, you three kind of play together. Okay, so A, B. Okay, A, B. 
it has both. This crossword has both, so you are A, so probably you two, the two ladies can, a, can be A, okay? And the gentleman is going to be B. A, B, A, B. Okay, you can turn your page, okay? A and B on the other side, all right? So that's a, okay? All right, so A and B. Okay, so what do you have to do? Probably you are familiar with this, um, with this activity. It's, it's like, it's an information gap, right? So you have a crossword and your, your pair has a crossword, but obviously the words are different. So you have the words she doesn't have and, you, and the, the other way around. Look at the words and, and you have to do the definition for the other, okay? The, for example, so you are A, right? You are A, so you say... What is seven across? Exactly. Good teachers know how, how it goes. Seven across. Can I? Um, you have to go up. Not upwards. Yeah, something like that. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so it's a good game. It's a good game. And if you look at the words, okay, so, yeah. No, it's not here. It's not here. In, it's in this book. It's in the book because this is what the student gets, okay? So you can play the game. So it's actually giving um, definitions and asking for definition. Yeah, so probably you can, you can try it out yourself. Look at the words. So there are not easy words sometimes. Plummet, low point, fluctuate, fluctuate. because this is what business. these, business, exactly, when you talk about a graph, right, or charts trends. So this, these are words which are extremely useful for the first uh, written task. Again, you can see it's, it has real value because of the, the very important words you have and it's fun. It's fun because you play. You just don't realize that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, we don't have to pay. I just thought that probably you just, as you know, Kati, you did it. You, you know, you found out what was missing. And again, you just go on till the very end. And till the very end, you have a full crossword with all the words. And, you know, you can go through it, okay? So again, take it home, play with it. Okay, use it with your students. And remember that if you have this, this is just one of the fantastic uh, activities. And there are 24 more activities in there, more fun activities. Yeah, for, for teachers who deal with business, it's easier. But as I said, oh yes, I mean, if you study sociology, these are very important words again, you know, when you talk about uh, statistics and charts, so it's, it's everything. Okay. Um, Yes, now it's a, th oh, it was an hour, good. Uh, so, uh, thank you, but before we leave for a break, any questions or anything we should clarify? Yes. 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 Robi, Robi, are they, are they, are these books available here? Is there any Sorry. discount, discount? Is there a discount, Robi? I'm sure, I'm sure there is. Yeah. So say it again. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if there is a, a hard of hearing candidate, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's the listening, then they can have a, an extra whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, IELTS also has that. So if, uh, for example, if somebody has, um, um, they, have, they have extra time. They have extra time, so they don't, they don't uh, read and write together with the others, but they write it separately and they get extra time. And with the hearing, yeah. yep. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you have to submit a medical yeah, certificate. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, if you go online to the British Council website, BritishCouncil.hu, then uh, and you, I think it's an easy to uh, navigate website, and you you uh, you check the IELTS website. There are uh, there's everything. If if you have a student who has problems like this, you have to submit the medical certification well before it because you know you yeah, but. Everything is there, all the information is there. Yeah, so there, there is, yes, I remember we had um, students with the uh, extra, yes, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, IELTS is paper-based because there are so many students, so many students. Um, uh, being um, computer-based requires a set. Can you imagine that many computers? I have. I can tell you that every second week there's an IELTS exam in Hungary, in Budapest, and I'm not really sure about Szeged, but there are probably one in um, in three months or something. But I don't want to say anything uh, which is not true. So you have to check online. Uh, the results are really fantastic. They are. They arrive in 13 days and 13 calendar days, not working days. No, it's, it's really good. And, and actually the, the results, so they, um, it's re, uh, the results are, um, there's an overall result, let's say 7.5, and there are separate results by the skill, yes. And it's very important because if your student wants to study in Aberdeen, uh, the university tells you at the language requirement that they um, they require, let's say, 7.5, but all of the, or none of the skills can be lower than 7.0. Because it's, it's very strange, I thought it's, oh, everybody, it's not a problem at all, but there are some, you know, different students are different, so some people are fantastic at listening, but not really good at writing. So you, you cannot really apply to a university with, let's say, a listening eight, and um, and the writing five, you can't do that. So there is a minimum in each each skill. I think again, it's very important to bear it in mind. But if you go online to the IELTS.org, okay. So anyway, so you can come and we can have a chat on on whatever questions you have. Okay. Anyway, IELTS.org is something you can you can check at home. And now we are going to have a 15 minute break. 15 minutes, right? Yes. And then we go on from four o'clock. Okay, so we're going to have a little rest. Thank you very much. Okay, and now, so welcome back. I hope you had a, a little relaxing break. <laughs> oh, you had your coffee, great. And, and you could have a you know, little browsing at the, at the stand, which is great. So, um, let's, May I, oh, and welcome for the viewers. So hello, we are back and we, we try to go on. Um, can I have a show of hands? Who teaches business English here? Yes, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> so two, two of you, yes. What about you? So you don't teach, but you don't teach at the moment, business English, right? But probably in the future. Okay, mm -hmm. and you? No, not, not at the moment. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so what are the challenges of business English? Are there any? Special vocab. Special vocab, yes. Um, the students have work. The uh, students have work yes, you, you, mean, you mean the students have to work hard? That means they have a job. This is what you are? Okay. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a challenge. So I don't know whether our viewers can hear you. Probably not, but probably I can just um, reiterate. So um, our colleague said that the, the, the student has to work hard. Actually, they have a, a serious job normally, right? They don't have time. They are tired. So the teacher goes there fully prepared. 
and and it's quite challenged to, to get them engaged and also it's quite difficult right okay and normally there are high profile business people sometimes they say oh I don't I can't I can't go to the lesson because I have a an important meeting then oh my god That's okay N exactly no continuity exactly I just you know translate for the viewers so disappear for a few weeks business travels business trips here and there so it's not easy on the other hand when I taught English what are the why is it difference I mean is there any anything which is easier when it comes to business I'm just it's a question thrown to at you did you find anything easier but when they are motivated because they oh, are great. The problem, uh -huh. so a colleague of, of ours said that they are motivated because they know mm -hmm. that they it's a need they have to use it, otherwise their, their business is not going to work well. Mm -hmm. So they are motivated, exactly, so it's a bit of... Oh, so they have to study English but they hate it? And they hate it because the companies force them. Ah, the companies force them, uh-huh. How can you hate studying English? But I don't know. Well, it's just my, my question. Uh -huh. So probably they are very good at German or French, we don't know. But they have to study English for whatever reason. I mean, English is the lingua franca, we know that. So obviously, I, as far as I know, German um, uh, companies have English as a lingua, lingua franca, as far as I know. Definitely when they are outside Germany. For example, here in Hungary, I heard that from you know, people who work there. Anything, what you found? I am not an economist. Ah, okay. They are the specialist economist and the businessman or the manager. Okay. And they bring the information mm -hmm. and I am a teacher of English. Yes. And I share this. Okay, so, uh huh. So Our also, I should be very prepared. Uh huh. So we have to, okay, so we are not. Oh right, it's a very nice word you use. Uh -huh, okay, so, so actually when we teach business, probably our knowledge is, is not enough because we are not business people and we are not economists and we are not lawyers when it comes to business law or whatever, or just financial people, so probably we have to read a little bit background, right? So sometimes, mm -hmm. but I think you can manage, so you give your expertise as a teacher and you know they give their expertise as business people and you somehow try to manage the two. But the thing is, when I, I, I taught English, business English here and there, but sometimes I realized that sometimes it's a bit the vocab is a little bit more, how do you say, guided. So there are not that many different topics. So they don't have to talk about fashion. No, probably they have to talk about fashion, what to wear, you know, when there's a business. Anyway, so it's a little bit probably more predictable, the, the topics. So when they go to, probably I'm, I'm, I'm more I'm thinking about business exams. So when they don't have to talk about or think about every, every possible topic in the world, but there are business topics a little bit narrow, more narrowed down. So what I would like to show you now uh, is, is, is really a brand new book, really, really. Um, it's of Delta Publishing, but now it belongs to Klatt. Um, I'm sure you know that Klatt is originally a, a German publisher a very high profile one and now they bought Dell. Again, it's, it's business, it's a, was it an acquire, uh, they acquired or something like that? Or I don't know. Anyway, now Delta, am I right that Delta Publishing the, as a whole belongs to Klett now? So yes, they bought it up. Again, it's a merging, I don't know, there are so many different things, but I don't know the background. Anyway, so now Klett uh, is responsible for data publishing. Uh, me as a teacher, I knew about data publishing because they had fantastic methodology books. So many things uh, which helped us when, I mean, in real teaching. So that's why I was so happy that I have a chance to talk about this. So, A Real Business English is the title. And it has two levels, B1 and B2. When I was young, I thought, <laughs> that you cannot talk business English uh, below B2. But then I realized, oh, of course you can. <laughs> 
and actually life you know the real life situation is that there are so many people and not even b2 but a2 b1 but a2 but they because they are in a in a business environment they have to use certain business vocabulary and business skills so um, this long outdated idea of of a B2 level language level which is needed for business English it's it's all history now so there are more and more very good books which offer um, a lot of good materials for lower levels for example B1 and as as the the cover suggests it's international it covers everything which is international nowadays nowadays businesses obviously they're international um, I mean, in, in the real sense of international, so there are bet um, between countries and nations. So, um, actually these books, I'm going to tell you, one of them I just saw 2018, so this year. But the big, one of the, the student books, they came out last year, extremely fresh. Uh, some of the components are even more fresh, so there are uh, this year's publications. So, with every student book, there is a workbook, and there's a teacher's book. I really like teacher's books because if you if you don't really know the material you get the teacher's books and you go one by one and you can prepare for your lesson properly if it's a good teacher's book. Uh, we, we talked about uh, we as a teacher probably we don't know the the business you know environment. Uh, the teacher's book has a lot of background knowledge for you to read so probably it, it helps you to enjoy your lesson more. I don't know how you are but I, I always uh, enjoy lessons when I can learn something. I, I can always learn from my students but, uh, but I, I do like it when I learn something from a subject or from a, a different field. So, so why? Why? There's so many business books in the market, so many. So why? Well, business is, is a developing you know, area, so I think you cannot really work from an old business book. I don't know what, what do you think about this, but with an old business book, with old photos, it's a bit awkward and I'm not saying it's, I don't, I don't say it's funny when they have these telephones nobody uses anymore and they talk about facts. I mean, okay, there's facts, but okay, it's a little bit history nowadays. So I think when it comes to business, you definitely need a fresh book with all the fresh, um, the you know, the, the new things in there. Uh, technology, you know, advances day by day. So if, if a book comes out now, probably in two years time you have to renew it or give a new edition because there are so many things which are outdated and it's a little bit awkward when you want to teach a high profile business person you know like a, I don't know CEO with something with some old traditional things nobody uses anymore so I I'm, I'm, I'm definitely when it comes to business you have to be up to date so it's it's brand new it's communicative so um, I think time allows that we go through um, a unit. So you will see it's communicative, so it helps your student to communicate. That's very important. There are so many meetings and, and small talk is very important when they meet in the lift and all these you know, uh, things when they have to just have a um, casual um, discussion with the, with the other clients, extremely important things. Communicative, it's, it's about communication but with other things as well, you will see. Uh, relevant topics, it's, it's obvious uh, and um, probably, probably... Now, I asked Robbie to give out two contents. Actually, we didn't write the level, so I'm going to ask you to write the level on that later on and probably we will we'll, we'll guess which level is which okay so these are the content page and you will see all the relevant topics and very nice photos if you look at the photos I think you agree that these this is the photos are the, the photos suggest that these are fresh materials. So just looking at the content, what do you think? Which is B1 and which is B2? Just looking at that. 
It's a two-sided, um, I'm just trying to see whether there's no hints, yeah. So what do you think? Which, which one is B1? What which one? So which, okay, B2 or B1 level, which one it starts with? Uh -huh. And why, why do you think? Why do you think that? Because even at lower level you should speak, you should be able to speak about and value or company structures. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, well actually, what, what about the others? What, what do you think? It's not easy, it's not easy. I'm just triple checking. Yes, okay, now I know. Hmm? So actually what I wanted you to, to see here that the topics are more or less the same because responsibility. Uh -huh. And which one do you think re responsibility? Okay. And what do you think which level is that responsibility? Yeah. Is it B1 or B2? Oh, it's B2. It's B2. <laughs> yeah, actually it's B2. Yes, yes, yes. So the one which has company structure, that is B1. Okay, that's the B1. So probably you might write it over there, I make a note to myself. So, okay, so the one, the content page which starts with company structure, that's B1, and the other is B2. But if you, if you, yeah, if you compare the two, you will see that there are reoccurring topics because, you know, for, for example, a meeting, you have to talk about, there are different people there, there are different level English, you know, knowledge, um, so we can hear different levels of English but you know they both have to talk about certain topics so actually both have some similarities that means all these topics are exploited in both levels but obviously higher level with you know much more complex language so um, we're going to talk about B1 later in details okay we're going to through a, a unit okay um, also for in-house training, what does that mean, in-house training? It's, and it, it says also, so you can actually prepare, for example, college students for the business life or in-house training. That means um, if there are trainings offered by the company itself, there are uh, so many times the HR department ask, uh, asks a language school to uh, to teach English there, so that means in-house they're already working there, these people, and there is a, um, a language provider who teaches them on the spot, but they were already there. So it's good for also for in-house, or, or you can use them before they start wor uh, even working. Clear structure, and, and I will, you will see, I really like the layout of a page, because I don't really like cramped pages, but it is quite the nicer structure. Uh, I'm going to, sh I mean you will see a whole unit, but as you can see, if you just look at this, from a distance, if you just look at the, how the structure is, so it's, for me it's quite transparent, it's quite structured, and it's not like here, probably there were trends in some years, that they were overloaded with reference here and there, and at some point I thought, oh my god, that's too much, I just can't find my way, where am I? I think it's very nice and, and transparent. You can see what, how, how the, um, the exercises or the tasks follow each other. And there are certain things which, like little benchmarks where you, you can go on. Anyway, so I really, I mean, I think it's again very important. Um, intercultural tips, as we, we touched on it and collect augmented I'm going to talk about that that's something fantastic and actually was it with ah with somebody from cat CLAT. we were talking about CDs okay again I just want to ask you uh, when you teach and you want to listen to audio so what do you use do you use the little CD player what do you use CD player Uh, okay, so you're thinking about interactive wipers, so you use a CD player, uh-huh. What else? Oh, good, so you download, uh-huh. Good, mobile, okay, all oh, right, this is where I want to 
Ah, get it. Okay, so you have things on your mobile. Yes. Any other? How you, how you use the listening? And I have to tell you, this is what I do. I download things here and I have a, this very small thing, this little speaker, which is so powerful. And, and the thing is, they are small. Small, not heavy. I put them into my bag and just off we go. And you don't play or fidget with CD-ROMs or the CD player is not working. Obviously, it, it dif it, it's different from you know, teacher to teacher, but I really like that. So, CLAT augmented is something fantastic. I'm going to uh, talk about it later. Uh, so, with the person we, uh, at CLAT, we were talking about this uh, technology, and I said that, oh my God, I can't check a CD at home because I don't have any more CD players. My computer is, as you can see, that's my own private computer that is small. I don't have a CD player or a DVD player in, in there. And at home, no, no. So I have to buy a, you know, a, how do you say this? It's an external drive if I want to use CD-ROMs. So probably CD-ROMs are a little bit old-fashioned or they become old-fashioned and CDs and CD-ROMs but this something is it's, it's really it's fantastic it's really good um, different accents but it's definitely it's going to be with the CLAT augmented so it's with the audio um, again units that means there are so many but you could see it actually getting back to how the layout is, I really like this. Again, it's something for me quite easy to, to grasp. So it's organized by unit, it's not overloaded. It, there's so many white spaces, so my, my, you know, you can focus on certain things and I really like that. Probably I'm a bit, you know, I just don't like these old books anymore, which there are so many things. Anyway, so um, you can see the units and there are, there are this appendix with pair work again if if you are lucky enough and you have a, a, normally there's there are so many one-to-one -one business lessons but if you have a pair or a few people there are so many pair work they can play there's so many information gap and and you know discussions and dialogues and just little role plays they can do and so actually there are so many hints in the book um, audio transcript, I mean the obvious things, useful phrases again, uh, word lists, it's so funny the word list is in English German, I like that, <laughs> but it's good for those who want to study a little bit of German or who knows German. CD-ROM is also there with MP3. So if you if you don't really like your telephone or your tablet, you can still use uh, an MP3 uh, or C your CD-ROM. Uh, and I wrote CLAT augmented everywhere because this is a fantastic new technology. Okay, we have that is the uh, the course book we are going to go deeply into, and we have the that's not a aha. Uh -huh. We have that, the workbook. Again, um, it's business. It's more about communication. It's more about functional language. But, of course, a lot of people, definitely Hungarians, they, they want to study grammar. They say they want to study grammar. You just can't tell them that, okay, we use grammar. Now they want to study. Of course, because they want to see clearly. And it comes from our tradition, which is really good. So. We we will always be clear about grammar, but we have to speak, and this is the you know the step we have to 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 leap. Anyway, so uh, grammar is is here in the workbook. Okay, so grammar is explained thoroughly in the workbook, and vocabulary is explained thoroughly here in the workbook, and there are so many exercises. So this is more of a a thing. I know with business people, it's not easy to give homework. Do you, have you ever? given homework no. they don't do that see some of them so we are lucky we can give them as homework or we can work with them in class so this these um uh, the workbook is um it, it really has these th can you see that or well, probably i'm just blocking the the view uh key and summaries and again it's good for self-study too so if you have some enthusiastic learners who want to do things at home 
you know, they can do that. Um, teacher's book, again, I love good teacher's books because then you don't have to think twice and, you know, suffer. Good teacher's books tells you everything and actually extra info on business areas, which is very important. Um, uh, when you go to a business environment and you teach them English, I don't think you so probably you have this fear that, okay, I don't know about this and that, but because you have some knowledge they don't know, and, and you don't know their knowledge, so it's a kind of shared thing, so we, we can share this thing, so I don't think it's a problem. Extra activities, copy master is something you can, uh, you can copy and give out certain um, um, games, actually. I have something here, but I'm not... Oh, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Thank you, Robbie. Um, and the other one which we all like is, is an end of book review. We all like that one. We don't have to create tests, right? So it's, it's in there. So this is the teacher's book. And before going into... No, no, this is not what I wanted. Before we go into detail to one of the units, this is what I just want to show you. So, what is this GLET augmented? It's, it's, it's the new, I don't know which generation, 10 generation of technology, fantastic. So, what you do, you download this app, it's called GLET augmented. Now, I study a little German from it because there are some instructions in German, but it's so obvious, so, so easy to understand. So, you download this on your something, either your uh, mobile phone or your laptop. No, no, sorry, no, no laptop, tablet, tablet. It's here, it's just tiny thing, ah, okay. And what you do, um, because I, I just, um, it's on flight mode so nobody calls me, but um, you need internet, but what you do, you find the book, because there's so many books here, like Bilder Kennung, who speaks nice German? Okay, anyway, so, and my name in Halte, I think it's my in, inbox or something. That means that my, my thing. So there are two options. So what you can, you look for the book because so many books, I just show it from a distance, okay? So this is how it goes. So many books have this uh, possibility. So you just click on yours. And then what you do, it scans, you open it up, let's say, you open it up where you see um, the listening one here. I have it, it's 15. And with this app you scan it. This is what you do, so basically nothing. You scan it and magic, it uploads all the, all the audio. That's just fantastic, it just appears on your phone. All the audio, you can just uh, play it as you go. So you can play it online or you can download them so you have them offline. So I, I really think it's fantastic and actually this solves our problem with the CD and all these things. So I'm, I'm really, I was really amazed <laughs> that uh, now it's, it's, there, it's there with us. So I can just recommend it. Yeah, okay, so actually, and it's free. So we, we know that uh, we spent fortunes on CD-ROMs, or the school had to spend a lot of money on CD -ROM, CDs, audio CDs, but now it's absolutely free. So you just download it, um, or no, first you upload it. If you, don't, if you don't want to use it just for one lesson, you don't want to keep it, you just play it online, or if you want to download it, you, you, you click on it. It's a very, very easy to use, very transparent thing to use, so it's very easy. You, you um, download it and you have it offline. So actually what I did, I downloaded a lot of B1 um, materials and I try. Ah, no, okay, actually now it's scanning, don't do that. Okay, I'm sorry, yes, and actually it, it looks like this. And it, it tells you, I don't know, I know it's just from a distance, it tells you that real business, English B1, track five. It's as easy as that. We're going to listen to, to some of them. So that's, so that's the magic and I really like it. And I'm sure that that's the idea that all the books, all the books have that or is it? All the business ones. All the business ones, fantastic. 
and there are so many little uh, for the little ones I saw that for primary and all these things so that's that's great okay and now let's um, jump in some work okay so that's that's B1 yes that's the B1 and we we'll see how many yeah with what with what how many ah three three pages three pages this is one whole unit and this is B1 So one of the ideas from the book is sparing students. If you have more than two, <laughs> well actually it's a, like a little group, then there are so many things you can play with. You can pair students with these little cutouts or you can put these things together. So this is, don't forget, this is B1 level. So what we do, there are these two things match. So you can use it as a game, you put all these things and they, you know, students put it together, they put them in pairs, or you give one, you know, one, of, one part of the, these are phrases, one part of the phrase to one person, the other part the other, and then they have to find the matches. Okay, you can pair them, it's a good game, so probably, um, again, I can show it to you later. But I'm, I'm going to just read out some, some of the um, phrases. Uh, to be interested in research. Now, how, how is it uh, cut together in the middle? So again, you can play with it, you can match them, or you can you know, find your partner. Okay, so this is the game, you find your partner. You can actually play it with other things, other, um, groups as well to be responsible for marketing okay again it's another pair cut into two uh, two pieces you can find your pair or you can put it together okay so actually this is just one of the ideas which is in the um, uh, teacher's book so uh, it, it's a good it's i think it's a good way to start a lesson or to finish a lesson so there are so many good ideas so this is training this is about training uh, as you can see, there is, okay, I'm going to show you, there is a, um, a kind of lead-in. Again, I'll I just show you how, from a distance, it's enough to see the structure, how it's put together, very easy to, to work with. Obviously, all the skills are there. So, training, what do you do? In the first part, there is a, a kind of intro, a lead-in. In groups, write down as many words as you can associated with training, and so on and so forth. And then we we dive into the uh, into a matching, as you can see. So seminar intensive course, you have to put the the definition together. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's it's relevant for a B one level student? Hopefully, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Because these are not too difficult, but they are enough for, for B1 level and they are enough to, for, for these uh, students to be able to communicate, to use these phrases. Okay, now I just want to really show you how the structure is, how it is built up. Uh -huh. Again, something personal with tell the group about a training course you have attended and if it's an in-house training obviously the in-house trainings happen from time to time so so you you can be sure that they have something to tell to each other again you can see that uh, something communicative at the very beginning if you go on if I can ah now you turn the page this is how you go on yes and then work in small groups. Of course, if you just have a one-to-one -one or if you have a, you know, just a pair, that's, that's okay. Um, so 
If you have groups, that's even better because, again, it initiates some discussion. So you can, that's the other side of page six, it's page seven. Mm -hmm. And then finding good, the best course. Now I'm going to show you the first listening, okay? Um, look at the, so read the ads below. There are three different ads. Just read them in very shortly. Okay, so let's play. Okay, so we are the students now. So read them because we are going to listen. And we have to match the speaker with the course they want to join. And probably for the viewers, I'm reading it out. So first one is about managing your, first course is about managing your time. And it's going to be a weekend workshop about managing time effectively. So that's the, the main idea. The second, B, is a Spanish course uh, with a qualified teacher who is a native speaker and uh, there are one-to-one -one classes. The third one uh, offers uh, a week-long course, that's not bad, for managers from different companies. So it's not going to be in-house, it's for managers from different companies and it's uh, 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 in, in a hotel, in a quiet country hotel. Um, yes, okay, so three different tribes. The first is, is a time management course, the second one is a Spanish course, and I, as, as far as I can, no, the first one is, is in a hotel. The time management course is in a hotel. The Spanish course, tell me if, if I'm wrong, is a one-to-one, -one, so it doesn't really say where it is, but I assume it can be done within the company. And the third one is for managers from different companies, and it's in a hotel for a whole week. Now we are going to listen to three people talking, and let's find out which speaker wants which course. Two A. I'd like to learn more about giving constructive performance feedback to my team. The problem is that I've got so many appointments every week. The phone never stops ringing, and it's hard to make time for regular ongoing training sessions. What I need is total immersion, no interruptions, and peace and quiet in the evening. I'm new in the company. My main reason for doing a course is to meet some people from other departments, but I also want to learn more about staying organized and avoiding stress. That's something I need to get better at, both in my personal and my professional life. I have to admit that I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Unfortunately, I've never been good at languages, and the thought of giving presentations in a language other than English really scares me. What I need is someone to help me prepare and rehearse my presentations. That would make me feel a lot more confident, I think. Okay, so we heard all three. <laughs> Probably one is obvious. The C, or the third one, which is the... Uh, okay, so sorry, so because I can hear different things. Okay, so why don't we just the manage the time management course? What do you think? Which the first, the second, or the third? third? No, it's not the second. You think the second? Uh huh. Sorry. The first. You think first, you second. So what? What other people think? You think the second? Okay, we're going to listen to it once again. Okay, it's very short. Okay. Any idea? Any more ideas? Okay, so we we think either second or first, right? So which which one was up? The Spanish course. Who is going to take that? The third one. The third one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the managers from different companies. You said you said the first one. Okay, okay. Should we just go listen to it once again? Okay. Two. Oh, sorry. Two okay. I'd like to learn more about giving constructive performance feedback to my team. The problem is that I've got so many appointments every week. The phone never stops ringing, and it's hard to make time for regular ongoing training sessions. 
What I need is total immersion. No interruptions, and peace and quiet in the evening. So what do you think? So that's the, the management, yeah, because she, she, she talked about... Mm -hmm. You agree? Okay, and the second one? I'm new in the company. My main reason for doing a course is to meet some people from other departments. But I also want to learn more about staying organized and avoiding stress. That's something I need to get better at, both in my personal and my professional life. Uh -huh. I have to admit, ah, sorry, 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 sorry. So the second. Uh, so why, why we can be sure about that the first speaker wants a management course, and why do we think that the second person wanted this time management? There was something she the said. First uh, speaker wants something uh, quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but at home she can't have it, right? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Uh huh. And actually, I, I I think I heard that the the second woman wants to get acquainted with the company's people, and probably that would be the best place to go to this training because the management training is for is it is it for the people from from the company. The third one, the management. Mm -hmm. Is it is it just from one company? The third. One? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's again one of something. But you know you can you can um, exploit this from different angles. So you have to listen to different uh, information. But I again I just I just really like this idea that I can use this. I don't have to do anything. That's fantastic. Okay, so again, there is another listening where you just tick, but we're go not going to listen to that. So again, it's another listening for true or false. Then number eight is coming. Again, another listening from a different angle. But you know, for some from students, listening is quite difficult. And, and why do you need to uh, to help them with listening. So why is it extremely important? Oh, it's important for everybody, but within the business environment. So why, why do you think it's important? Because of the different accents. Exactly, different accents. Yes, you go, you go on a meet, you sit in a meeting and you don't understand what the other person from she, wherever, I don't know, India is talking about. It's not easy, you have to get used to this and you have to get used to different accents with listening and there are different accents on these recordings all right um look at the again example so there is a model which is always very if you look at the that's page eight and you look at the so there are always uh, models and always possibilities you have to learn and again e you have to work on your own again and to find more examples and f is already a, a talking a, a discussion exercise so when you said you were teaching business was it a one-to-one -one or was it a small group everything. okay everything okay oh really big groups Oh, oh, do you consider six, seven people big? Mm -hmm. A big group. Oh, good for you. That means you, you are used to one or two. <laughs> six and seven is ideal, isn't it? Is that ideal? Oh, not for you. Okay. But you know, it's my, it's my opinion. I found, I found it very good because you can pair people differently so they can, you know, work with different people so they can get to used to different accents and different ways of thinking. That's one thing, and that you can do so many exercises together. That's my idea. Ah, okay. So the uh -huh. ah, okay. So probably in your in your business lessons, you you just sit at at a table, and you can't really stand up because it's a tiny little meeting room or something. Okay. Oh, different situations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, no window. Ah. 
prison cell. Well, you call it a meeting room. <laughs> Other people call it a prison cell, yes. <laughs> yeah, because they want to avoid anything from, you know, the outer world. And it, yeah, it proves to be <laughs> true. Okay, so there are different environments, but I'm sure your experienced teachers and there's so many ways you can explore these things. I just want to really just rush through uh, research on the internet, again, or just from the top of your head, uh, that's G. Again, H, tell your group. So again, speaking, speaking. There are so many speaking, so it's very important. Again, getting back to the Hungarian way of learning, Hungarians are um, famous or infamous uh, because they don't want to utter a sentence uh, before they know it's perfect. And some other nationalities, they don't care. Who are, who are better communicators? Yes, I mean, they probably don't say it properly, but they communicate. So I think, you know, truth is somewhere in between, obviously. So, oh no, I mean, perf we should go for the perfect sentence, but you, you will never get there if you, you know, if you push your students down first. There will never ever be that level because they don't dare to utter a word. So, so just let them speak, let them talk, let them do whatever they can. I mean, you can make notes, you can have your you know, mistakes or, or the error corrected later and all these things. So just let them speak, let them speak to get used to that. Okay, they can say what they want. You are the teacher, you can just listen from behind and write your notes. But don't try to get this thing out of their head that they have to have a, pro, uh, a fantastic sentence. No, they start from just throwing things together and sooner or later they will get there. So, but I think the new generation is a little bit different. They are probably, they are much easier, right? They don't really care. Or they are different. So what I can see, the new generation is more open to these kind of solutions. While the older generation... Yes, exactly, no inhibitions. Obviously you can't say that 100%, but probably the majority. But what I just wanted to point out that there are so many uh, activities where you have to, sp I mean, your students have to speak. So that's eight, and we have, oh my god, nine. No, it's on the other side, I keep doing that. <laughs> so eight, and the other side, getting course information, p uh, emails, extremely important. It's B1 level, don't forget. So you have to put together an email, different chunks, and you have to order them. And again, it gives them a very good idea how an email should be structured. I think it's very, very important for them to, to, to write nice emails. And again, B, um, sentence completion, and there is a little box with some British and American words. It's page nine, are we talking about page? Yes, page nine. Mm -hmm. It's on the other side of page eight. This is how it goes. Okay, eight and the other side nine. Uh -huh. So British and American, which is again very important. So these words are not good or bad. These are different. And again, and there are some South African usage and Australian usage, but we have to um, emphasize this for our students that English is not just a, one word and that's you know the the ultimate truth but there's different usage here and there and it we we just want to draw their um, attention to english being international so obviously you have to understand everything all right and then let's look at page 10 all right so again writing emails just some ideas what are what are, do we have to listen when you write emails? And then you write an email. Again, extremely important. And you put all the things you just learned and you dealt with together. With, you know, it's a productive uh, task, so you create an email. And then you swap with a partner and you just talk about what you learned. Again, what happens, you, you speak. Say you speak, you swap with your partner and you discuss. You speak again, I mean your students, they speak again. And then there's a little reading. And actually they have to personalize. So it says, read this text about the need for training. 
Does this apply to your company too? So you have to personalize. This is how they, mo they are motivated. They have to talk about, they have to link it to their experience. So they have to uh, talk about their experience connected to this. Again, there is another listening. No. Okay, we are not doing that. So there's another listening again and and you draw some sentences out of the listening that is page 11 now and you just learn phrases and then just to to wrap up the whole unit uh, there is a, a simulated meeting and where and there are some guidelines they have to look for and so that was the you know the the ultimate goal of the whole thing to have some uh, listening experience to know some vocab uh, and then to be able to talk about productively and creatively so so I think it's a it's a clear structure so when I was looking through it I found it quite clear and easy to follow and well built and well thought so that's why I really wanted you to see a whole unit put together. So this was uh, a B1 level, okay, and, um, and it's the same thing. You have the, we're going to give you, before you leave, don't, not, not now probably because we're going, we are not going into details, but before you leave, there is a, a whole unit from the B2 level for, <coughs> for you to take home. <coughs> Probably I'm <coughs> sorry. Um, I think it would be not too time consuming, but you can definitely go through. Um, yes, the whole the whole uh, setup. Any questions you have? So again, I just wanted to. So why? That's, that's always the question, so why? Why should I buy this book? Because there's so many, so many. I think again, it's fresh, it's very clear, it's very thorough, it goes you know, clearly from A to B, and I love this, the, the, clat, the augmented, I, really, I think it's, it's fantastic, it's new technology. Um, probably I didn't mention, but I think it's obvious, when it comes to a, a good, a good business, title and definitely the um, the title suggests it's real so actually it was put together with real business people but I think it's obvious so with real companies real business people real ideas real materials any questions yes there any case studies mm, um, actually not in the um, student book but just you know, not um, because because that some yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yes, yeah, so I just want to see in the. So what we have? Mm, yeah. No, no. We have some readings, and actually the readings. Can be yes, you can exploit them as case studies because they are real situations. They are about real situations, and there are some exercises, some tasks. Yes, yes, yes. These are definitely taken out from a real context, so we can call them case studies. So, but it's not a like a. We don't call them case studies, and then we build something around it. I mean, there are the other way around. So, real life ideas are in the book. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you, if you don't have any questions, so before you leave, uh, B2 is about company structure and it's about different departments. It's really interesting. Which, de what does, which department does what and all these things. I can give you one. Okay. I probably I just uh, no. I give you one pair just to remind you that this is a good idea. Okay, just as a reminder. Okay, responsible for marketing, Coty. Okay, okay, it's just a good. 
yeah, just a good way. Uh, oh, okay, you have a, a whole armory of this, these things, right? Yeah, okay. But if you are interested, I can give you some of these little things. Yes. Just, a, it just an idea to remind you how you can play. What is it? To be responsible for marketing. Okay. Would you be interested to have? Just as a reminder, okay, what is it? To make a decision, it goes together. More meeting, to look forward to meeting someone. Oh, that's a, that's a Hungarian mistake. That they, okay, at networking, to be good at networking. Okay, I'm sure you are good at networking. I'm doing my best. To write the agenda. Okay, thank you very much. So thank you for listening, thank you for Nyasa for the opportunity and thank you for the viewers, I hope they are still with us. Or actually, you know, this is um, uh, filmed and you can go back if you're interested. I don't know, probably I won't <laughs> see myself. Thank you, thank you very much for, for listening, <laughs> thank you. And if you have any questions regarding the books, here is Robbie and, and the stall is still there. So thank you very much. Uh, again, don't forget to put, what are these things? I was reminded. There is, there is the, so this is the CLAT newsletter, right? And, and there is a, a feedback form in your folder. Oh, you gave it to her, uh, him. <laughs> uh -huh. Probably I need more drink. <laughs> and I think, I, so I say goodbye to our viewers and hope to see you next time. Say goodbye and have a very nice evening, everyone.